So I'd like to show you a second example of how we can use these equations of motion, which are back up here, these four equations of motion, with uniformly accelerated motion, but we're going to be in 1D only. So I'm going to show you an example of something that really happened to me. So I was rock climbing, um, and I dropped my water bottle. By the way, this was actually on one of my first dates with my wife. Um, I'm still so surprised she married me after this. Well, we didn't uh, get married right after this first date, of course. I think I had to win her over. But uh, it turns out um, I met my lovely wife, who's Danish. Uh, I met her in Canada, and we were living in Ottawa at the time. And um, so there I thought, well, first date, I'd better really impress her. So by the way, I had two awesome first dates. My first two dates with her were about as good as it can get. The problem is after that, I didn't really know what else to do. Uh, my first date with her was to take her climbing. I thought that would be really fun since I liked climbing. Uh, I still do. So I took her rock climbing and stupid me, I actually dropped my water bottle from the top of a cliff. And so I estimated the height to be about 22 meters. Now, when I dropped it, it dropped really close to her. I mean, she was at the bottom, and it slammed on the ground right near her. And I remember thinking, well, first of all, I'm glad I didn't hit this really nice Danish girl. But I also remember thinking, wow, I wonder how fast it was going. So this is the question we're going to consider. And by the way, this is a picture of her rock climbing. This is not on our first date because uh, I didn't bring a camera then. I thought that'd be a bit weird. But uh, this is us climbing later on somewhere else in Canada. Um, this is near Al uh, Calgary. And this is uh, in a town, well, this is the town of Canmore down below there. And we're at a place called the Grassy Lakes. So this is my wife, Inga, and she's climbing here. It's actually a really easy climb, even though it looks crazy. It's actually not nearly so bad as it seems. So anyway, so I took her on this uh, date here, and um, I dropped my water bottle. So the question is then, what will happen to it? How fast will it be going? So maybe I better consider something here. First of all, you might think, oh, this is totally different than what we were looking at before. But it's not. It turns out in this situation right here, the mass doesn't matter. Because a lot of people think, oh, I need to know how heavy this thing is. Well, I shouldn't use the word heavy. I need to know how massive this thing is. But it turns out mass does not matter. So this is an important key point here. So the mass does not matter. It could be a water bottle that has a mass of 5,000 kilograms or just um, one kilogram or even a few grams. If there's no air resistance, the speed that this bottle hits the ground will be the same that a feather would hit the ground. Now you might think, no way, feathers don't do that. Well, feathers work the way they do because of air resistance. But in my question, I said, oh, there's no air resistance. So that means a feather would drop at the exact same you know, speed. It would hit the ground at the same speed, and in fact, at the same time, as let's say a car dropped from the same exact height. Now, if you don't believe me, I'd like to show you a little video here. Um, this is one that I found here on YouTube. Yeah, this is, let's take a look now. This. This is actually on the moon, so this is where there's no air resistance. And um, on Apollo 15, they decided to take a look at this and try to show this example. It's a little bit grainy, but you're going to see in his, uh, well, in his left hand, on our right, there's going to be a, they actually brought up a falcon's feather. And in his other hand, he's got a hammer. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this. So as I play it, I mean, you won't hear the narration, but it's okay. So what he does is that's his feather, that's the hammer. And what they're going to do, I mean, he's explaining a little bit about what's going on. And then they zoom out and you're going to see something really cool. Okay, so he's going to drop the two of them and watch. We would expect that the feather should drop a lot slower. That's just because of air resistance. So on Earth, the feather certainly would fall slower. And this is actually Galileo who mentioned this as well, that he said that it doesn't matter what you drop, they should hit at the same speed and even at the same time. Watch carefully. He drops them. Well, drop it. Come on. There you go. Boom. They both hit the ground at the exact same time. And in fact, they'd be going the same speed. This really does work. Okay, so the mass doesn't matter. The only reason why we care normally is because, well, it's not an idealized situation. There is actually air resistance. Okay, so in real life, there is air resistance. But if there wasn't, here's how fast it would go. So mass wouldn't matter, first of all. And it turns out with air resistance, mass also doesn't matter. It's all about its shape and how much air resistance it has. So that's why a feather is very resistant, so it's very good for flying type things. But in this case, the mass doesn't matter. So what we can do then is write down, again, 
U-V-A-S-T. So we want to consider the different situation here. So we have initial speed, final speed, acceleration, displacement, and time. So my little trick at least is to say U-V-A-S-T. So I'm going to try to figure out what's what. Now my water bottle's initially at rest, so that means initial speed is zero. V is the final speed, and if you look at the question, that's what I'm asking for. I want to know how fast is it going, so I want to put a star there. Now the acceleration, this is really important. Remember I mentioned at the beginning here that it's important that things that are down are negative or left are negative, and things that are right or up are positive. Well, the acceleration due to gravity always acts downwards, always. And since we're assuming that this is on Earth, then it's going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared, of course. Now, if I made this a positive, that would mean I would drop this thing from 22 meters high and it would just go straight up. Well, that's not realistic at all. I mean, we're going to assume here that this distance, maybe I actually just draw it like this. Let's assume this here is 22 meters. Oops, that's a little bit hard to read. Maybe I'll just move it. So I'll just assume it's like this. So let's just assume it's like that. So this is a height of 22 meters. And I want to find out the speed that it's going when it hits the ground. Now, do I know my displacement? I sure do. My displacement is 22 meters. So you might think, great, I put in a 22, right? But if I said it was positive 22, that means I would drop it. And finally, I'd be calculating how fast is it going when it's 22 meters above because I defined everything, I always define things as, you know, anything up is positive, down is negative. But it falls from here down. So that's why I have to throw a negative here. And the time, well, I don't know the time it takes and hopefully don't care. So now, this is my shopping list, so to speak. I'm looking for an equation that has a V that hopefully avoids a T. Okay, so something with final speed that has no time. Let's see, do I have any equations that have a V with no T? So well, this one doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. Aha, that one. By the way, it doesn't always work out this nice. Sometimes you have to do an intermediate step. But in this case right here, I've got V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So I'll write that down. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now my U value is zero, that makes it nice. And in fact, this is a really easy question then because I just want V. So V is going to be, well, let's see. Well, V squared is 2AS if I really want to show all the steps. So that means then that my V is going to be square root of 2AS because I want to get V by itself. And that's how you undo a square. You take the square root. Technically, it should be plus or minus. Mathematically speaking, there's always, you know, if you take the square root, it should be plus or minus. But we're just going to consider the actual value here. And we're saying how fast, we don't care about the sign of it. So here we're going to be a little bit sloppy because they didn't say what's the velocity, they said what's the speed. Right? So if they wanted how fast, that's asking for a speed. So we don't really care if it's positive or negative. Although if you did want to look at the velocity, think about it, how fast is it going when it hits the ground? Well, it's going downwards, isn't it? When it's landing right here as it's about to hit the ground, it's going down. So technically, we should actually have a negative here. So maybe I can just say that I'll say actually the negative version of it. I mean, it's technically a plus or minus, so we'll just consider it here. So that means I have to take 2 times negative 9.81 times negative 22. Now, good thing I had a negative times a negative, because if not, I would have a square root of a negative, which you're not supposed to do. So this is technically, it's plus or minus square root of 2 times 9.81 times 22. Well, I'm going to get out my trusty calculator to help me out here. Maybe I better clear my history. There we go. So I'm going to just calculate this one. So 9.81 times 22 times 2, because a negative times a negative is a positive. And I'm going to take the square root of that answer. And if I do that, I end up with 22. Point well, let's say, um, oh, sorry, this is about 21. If I want it to the nearest single value, if I want two significant figures, I'll say it's 21. So I'll say then that this speed is pretty much, well, 21 meters per second. If I want the, ve the velocity of it, it would be negative, right? Because I would actually say it's negative 21 to imply it's going down. 
So you might think, well, how fast is that really? Um, I could always convert that to uh, kilometers per hour. So just, I'm gonna go really fast here and show you this. So if I have meters per second, then I want to get rid of, uh, well, meters. Because if I want kilometers per hour, I want to multiply by something that gets rid of the meters. So meters has to go on the bottom. I know that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So that means if I just did this, I would have meters cancel out, I'd have kilometers per second. But I don't want that, I want to get rid of the seconds. Seconds are on the bottom, so I have to do something with seconds on the top. Turns out there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. This is one kilometer. So this right here, seconds cancel out, so I have 21 times 3,600 divided by 1,000. Now 3,600 divided by 1,000 is just 3.6. So if I do 21 times 3.6, whoops, I need to make sure I'm on the right thing here. I guess I need to, yeah. So this times 3.6, I get an answer in kilometers per hour of about 75. So I would say this is around 75 kilometers per hour, which is actually pretty quick. This is roughly 75 kilometers per hour. And if you wanted this in uh, miles per hour, let's see, that would be what? Nearly 50 miles per hour. So just to give an example that this is why you probably don't want to drop a water bottle on your uh, you know, first date here. And by the way, on my second date, just so you know, I actually took her flying because I had my pilot's license still at the time. Um, so I actually took her flying. So the thing was, then I had an awesome first date of climbing, had an awesome second date of flying. And the problem is after that, I didn't know really what else to do with her. So it was always just like dinner and a movie or something really boring. I mean, I figured, hey, I used up all my good stuff on the two first dates. So uh, that was a little bit stupid of me. But hey, she still married me in the end. So I think it worked out in the end. But this is just showing you some examples of how we can deal with these equations of motion.